Okay, so I don't actually really care too much about watching a full-length pageant. I really only care about the pretty costumes. And I think the most exciting part of Miss Universe, or the part that everyone probably like checks in for, is always the national costume section. Because usually you get to see some of the most like amazing, magnificent, extravagant like outfits and costumes. Or sometimes you'll see the absolute like craziest, most random, bewildering stuff. And this year's Miss South Africa national costume definitely falls into the latter category and at the time I was like hey would anyone be interested in seeing like a tier ranking of all of those costumes and now I'm delivering in time right um it's not like we have a new Miss South Africa now but that's fine and for those of you who don't know the national costume segment is one of many segments in the beauty pageant there's like a ball gown section there's the bikini section i don't know if they still do those anymore the the, the national costume stuff is really interesting so this is usually when the contestants have to arrive in something that's like reflective of their culture their traditions their heritage or any sort of symbols associated with their nation now interestingly enough the national costume segment doesn't count towards points it's just pretty much just like a really fun part of the show and i'm really glad it doesn't count towards points because i don't think we would have as many miss universe titles as a country if it was so i'm going to do a tier ranking of all of the miss universe costumes that i could find i was only able to go up to like 2002 and just a little bit more about sort of how these costumes kind of like play out is usually some countries might go with like their traditional ethnic dress some people might do some like historic clothing some people might infuse things with like folklore or their own mythology or religion sometimes they'll be inspired by like their natural resources indigenous plants their landmarks or any significant historical events that are really unique to their country uh maybe miss france will come as like a baguette miss australia will be the mass genocide of the indigenous population who knows <laughs> Usually the really exciting thing or interesting part about the section is also like how intricate and detailed some of these costumes are because essentially they don't have to be ball gowns. It's not really so much about showing off like beauty to an extent more as it is about like a walking work of art that's like wearable and it's really a great time for a country to show off the creativity and the craftsmanship and the skill of their designers. So I'm going to take you through my tiers here. <laughs> And I thought I was really clever with these. So first we're gonna have our S tier, which for me is gonna be surprising because I have a very low bar for how good I think these costumes will be. But if a costume can genuinely surprise me and go like, okay, gag me, that's like, yeah, that's S tier, you win, well done. Then we've got, all right, all right, like, okay, it might need a little bit of tweaking, but it's still miles ahead of other things that I've seen and there's still something either really fascinating or it's got really great potential or maybe it was just really well made which is a really important factor to me and then third we've got bring back the bikinis as in this is so passable but i'm so bored i would rather see half naked woman then we've got four which is just cut the cameras like cancel the show what the hell were you thinking let's wrap this up and then finally we have d for you know do i need to say more and basically, I'm going to be judging these costumes by four things. So number one is the overall effects, because at the end of the day, it still needs to be like an interesting, beautiful, fascinating garment to look at. And that's like the most important thing for me. It's like, does this catch my attention? Does it do what it's set out to do? Is it like glamorous? Does it feel pageant worthy? Is it worthy of this global stage? Then I'm also going to judge how well it meets its symbolism and theming. So one, does the theme make sense for like representing South Africa in some way? And how does this look accurately portray that theme? Or how are these civil, so, ooh, my God. or how are these symbols like cleverly integrated into the costume? Was this done in a not obvious, like silly or like really reductive way? Did they find a way to add an interesting modern twist or a fresh perspective? Did they choose interesting symbols that actually feel like that represents south africa which i understand and i really appreciate that that's a really difficult thing to do in our case and i think that's probably what has made some of these costumes so hit or miss is that like we have over like nine twelve ethnicities in this country there are so many different cultural groups there's so many different perspectives on what it takes to be a south african then i'm also going to judge it on construction and fit because you know i'm a i'm a, I'm a fashion design girl i care about those things like i want to see if things were well cut does it actually like fit the bust area you know what i mean do the seam lines make sense is is there like any stitching showing is something cut jaggedly 
I also want to look at like how much craftsmanship went into something like the beading, the embroidery, the trim. I think that really matters. Also, just in terms of how all of this goes towards something looking cheap or expensive. And this is kind of how I judge that by like the construction, the fit, the cuts and the tailoring. And then finally, the styling, because obviously that also really helps make an outfit sing. So things like the shoe choices, the jewellery. Also, another really big part of most Miss Universe national costumes are like head pieces for some reason. And also like hair styling, makeup and etc. I did do my best to try and make sure that I could not only get like what the theme or the symbol was supposed to be for the costume, but also try to make sure I could find like who the designer was as well i couldn't find this in every case so i'm really sorry if there's any ones that i missed and you're welcome to like tell me about it in the comments below i'm just gonna really apologize about the quality of this but like what are you gonna do um apparently no one thought to back up these archives for um a girl making a youtube video back in 2001. so again i don't actually have any information on who made joan strauss's dress i don't really know what the theme was meant to be um but uh <laughs> she is kind of wearing pretty much like what i would associate with most traditional zulu wear so she's got this color on her head and then there's all this black and white beading we can't really see the rest of the outfit um you know what? overall it's okay like i'm not absolutely like blown away but i don't think it's bad and i know like also like all of that um traditional beading does take a lot of work so there's merit to that and it's a really beautiful outfit. I don't know if Joanne Strauss is like Zulu or anything. Because it's another recurring thing we'll see. Also, I see a lot of times that people will just like pick one um, ethnic group. And then that's like, yeah, representative South Africa. Which I guess I don't really like that much. But I guess when there's so many to choose from, what are you going to do? Um, and like, what? Is, actually, I don't even know what Joanne Strauss's racial background is. Is she like colored? Is she mixed race? Actually, anyways, that doesn't matter. I think I'm going to put Miss Joanne... And yeah, she can get it. Um, now nah, I'm gonna put it and bring back the bikinis. Like, all right, girl. All right, girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. We get to 2004, and that Miss South Africa that I was Joan Ramakoshi. And this one's really funny to me because obviously 2004 is like 10 years after the official arrival of democracy, <laughs> and like. They just put Nelson Mandela on her torso and called it a day, like, okay, alrighty, and you know what, fine, um, <laughs> uh, fine, and then obviously it's black and white, which are, like, colors you would also say to see it with, like, Kosa, um, cultural dress, which Nelson Mandela was, um, but looking at this, so there's this really big feathered headpiece here, um, and again, also, I wasn't able to find any information on who made this or, like, what went into this, I don't actually know what kind of bird feathers but it's really beautiful and i also like the black and white feathers and i think the brown is actually a really nice um injection into this like very black and white look and i think the headpiece is really cool um but in proportion with the rest of the look i feel like this needed like a full big ball gown a-line skirt i feel like it feels like she's like a little she looks like a feather duster yeah she's just like a feather duster when she's like this like sort of straight up and down thing and then she's got this huge <laughs> um huge feathered headpiece on her head i really appreciate the detail of like the bushman caveman style paintings on the skirt which i think would have been even more beautiful to see on a larger um surface area i don't understand why there's just like this peak of tool at the bottom and the skirt ends so short um it feels like they should have either given her shorter heels then or something or actually just lengthen the shirt like the skirt i don't know if they like ran out of fabric or something the vertical striping though on the pencil skirt part is very pretty um, so we've got this like corset or stay style bodice here, right? And then we've got um, that this face plastered in the middle. It's just so like, hmm, what do you think of when you when you think of South Africa? Like, <laughs> you know, I feel like if you really wanted to include Nelson Mandela in a design, I think a more interesting thing would have been to include like the prints from those shirts he used to wear a lot because I think those are really pretty and interesting. And that's like a nice less like derivative way, but whatever. But okay, it's got this silly like color thing here, which I feel like was really unnecessary it's working it's like fighting this necklace she's got here i think i would have loved to give the necklace more of a spotlight i'm okay with the sleeves etc um the peplum little skirt thing there mm, not necessary just go for the big ball gown skirt you know what i mean like don't be afraid so i'm gonna put this in 
Yeah, I'm gonna put this in. Hmm, how harsh should I be? Uh, <laughs> I don't think I like it. Yeah, no, I don't like it. Now we're going to 2005 and the Miss South Africa. That year was Claudia Henkel. And I think it's always, sometimes I feel like the people are setting up the white girls when they win and you have to do <laughs> this section. <laughs> So Claudia Henkel is also another one I couldn't find any information on in terms of like what the theme was supposed to be, who made the garments, um, and like, you know, like what the vibes were. But um, from what we can see, she's got, okay, we've got another like black and white feathered headpiece um, that, no, I hate this headpiece. I think it's hideous. Yeah, I think it's gross. And then... Oh, okay, this wing thing is going to be a recurring theme and I don't know why I keep coming up. So she's got these two long tabs um, hanging from her arms and then there's ombre blue dyed feathers at the top. I, I don't like it. Um, and then I think what's hanging from her arms, like these wings, are it's like a it's some sort of tapestry applique. I can't tell if it's painted or if it's embroidered, but either way, I don't think it was really well done. It looks very crafty and not in a fun, kitschy way, just in a like... A child did this actually no that's a little bit offensive to children but like no and then she's wearing this feathered skirt I don't actually know what this is called anyone can tell me um the skirt's fine this whole look is just so haphazard it's like it feels very it's actually a little I don't know it feels very like tribal but tribal in the sense of like what um Europeans think tribal dress is you know what I mean? Not really. It doesn't really feel true to any like one culture or it doesn't even take any sort of like care in putting this together in a cohesive way. Um, yeah, this is actually absolutely straight garbage. Sorry. Like, <laughs> do I need to say more? This, this sucks. I'm sorry. Like, that's so awful. Okay, then I wasn't able to find any images for our 2006 queen, which was Noctula Sitole. So we're jumping to 2007. So we're going to have another white woman, which is Megan Coleman. Okay, we're back with more closer references, but we also got sort of the Nebele bangles and the necklace here. Um, and then she's got like the colors of the South African flag across the torso. And then this like flared ruffle skirt at the bottom. And then, oh, there's there's leopard print um, before, the, at the, before the slit. Okay, I will say, number one, this dress fits her really, really, really well. And I do like the contrasting of, like, the leopard print, and then we've got, like, this white sequined or beaded fabric. This photo is not very clear. I can't tell. I think that's actually very beautiful. I feel like they should have just kept the leopard print to just that one bust cup. I think that would have had a really great effect. I think the South African flag is always ugly. There's no way you can bring those four, or is it five colors together and make it look nice. Many have tried all have failed it just doesn't work i'm sorry babe like i'm sorry <laughs> it's always hideous we have a gross flag and that's a yuck and new ones yams i hate most countries flags i think they're ugly i don't think we should be wearing flags and stuff i think the only country that has like a really nice flag is like japan yeah but again yeah this is like this fits her really nicely um i would have kept this to just the gold bangles in her arms again because yeah i don't know if we needed the like, beaded bangles either and yeah eh. I'm gonna put this because I'm like, you know, I'm mildly impressed, but I'm definitely not surprised or taken aback. So I'm gonna put this in I like the bikinis. Like it's possible, but yeah, we can go back to the drawing board on that one. Right, now we're gonna jump to 2009 where our queen is Tatum Keshwa. She's also another one of my favorites. I love her. She's also just like the woman that you are, she's so beautiful. Like, wow, wow, wow. Not to say that everyone isn't beautiful, but she's just one of my favorites. Like, so Tatum Keshwa. So we've got another Escola Moments, which is fine. I think that's a very beautiful um, piece of headwear that we should actually see more of. She's got the big beaded necklace here. Yeah, and then... <laughs> mm, okay. Okay, cool. So we've got tiger stripes. <laughs> Why in Africa would you have tiger stripes? Like, honey... Honey, just because it's animal print does not automatically make it African or South African, my babe. Like, especially because leopards are right there. Zebras, right there. Like, it's not that hard, babe. Like, I don't have to teach you guys everything. She's got a bunch of bangles on, a long beaded apron. And then, is this leather? I'm sorry, this is garbage. I'm so sorry to do this to my girl. I love her, but actually, and I don't want to say anything else. I think this is so gross. 
Okay, so next we have 2010, which is also an interesting year because that was the World Cup year. So it'd be interesting to see if anyone implemented any like football themes or whatever, or if that one feels particularly patriotic because that was a very patriotic year. Also one of the best years in this country ever. Like everything was really good for a moment. And this dress was designed by RJK Creations. I don't actually know if this company still exists. I wasn't able to find out much more about them. And this item was, it's, this was and this look was inspired by Posa traditional garments. But according to designers, it's made more form-fitting and flamboyant. And it's also made from raw silk, which is really interesting because I didn't even know you could get raw silk in South Africa. Or at least not at the fabric stores I go to. So that's really nice. And let's look at it. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I really like the fact that they went with this, these colors because it's not like super obvious as opposed to just like the black and white we've seen or like any of the animal hide references or any of the colors from that stupid ass episode. Um, so I think that's really, really nice. And I think, oh, this is like, I don't like green, but this is one of the shades of green that I think is so beautiful. And I actually really like this blue um, sleeve half cape thing. But vibe, okay, so we've got this waist belt. Mm, nah, nah, that's nah, no for me. And then we've got the sort of asymmetrical mermaid hem thing at the bottom. I wish this tool matched the green of the rest of the dress. It feels very much like they bought the first fabric first, cut it up, and then it was like, oh, damn, couldn't find a color match or something. I don't know. I just feel like that wasn't fully thought through. And I get that maybe this might have been a choice to contrast things, but like, it's just so out of whack with everything else going on. And I think the blue does enough to bring like vibrancy to like the more muted color palette. It's not necessary. This headpiece feels a little like mm, it's very hatty more than it is like dooky i don't know how to explain that i'm not a big fan of that but also sometimes i find like um hit pieces on white people to look a little bit off and that might just be an internal bias thing sorry guys i'm a racist i'm working on myself okay i'm working on myself um hoop earrings are fine bangles are okay but i think this is kind of unnecessary i think i would have liked to keep that arm bare who knows can't see what the shoes are I'm going to put this at, all right, all right, actually. I think, yeah, and I think, yeah, some of y'all going to be real mad at me. Now we get to 2011, and then that Miss South Africa that year was Bokang Monchane, and then her garments is inspired by Ndebele and Betty outfits. And it was designed by Andy Le Benye, and then I've got this quote from the designer. He said at the time of this dress, this dress was inspired by the dramatic colors and art. He's referring to the Betty and Nabella cultures. I've incorporated the color blocking flashback fashion trend currently unfolding on international runways. Uh, you know, I, I really miss how ubiquitous color blocking was in like 2010, 2011. Like every time you went outside, you were just assaulted by the most saturated combination of colors all the time. And it was just so fun for me personally. Like I just feel like, ah, I love, I love when I go outside and I see colors, okay? It's just exciting to me. Alrighty, um, anyways, as for Bokang's look, I just feel like, oh my goodness, this um, just little quick rap movement, like she was about to do her skincare care routine, like nah, not a big fan. And we got the ugh, accessories, also boring. And again, bringing in this flag. Um, also at the sort of drop waist belt length, which I don't really care for. I think this color combination with the ruffled tour is really interesting, but it is placed so haphazardly <laughs> on this dress. It feels really amateur and it looks really cheap and costumey. And again, once again, we have like these weird differing lengths for some reason. So like you'll see at the bottom, like the blue part of the dress ends very significantly well before the rest of the printed pattern. It just looks so... Mm, yeah, it just looks like a chat again. I need to stop insulting children, but yeah, this is really amateur hour. This is very first year design. It's so like you just needed to get a wow factor and you wanted to get a reaction out of me, and you know what you did, but like you look really dumb right now. So, um, do I need to say more? Oh, my God, okay, 2012, and then we've got Melinda Bam. Ah, I don't know why this woman had such a hold on me when I was in high school. Like, I was obsessed with her. I thought she was so cool. She was so hot. She was so funny. She was so vibrant. Like, yo, that was an it girl for me. Like, oh my God, what a memory. So Melinda's dress was designed by Go Wild Designs and it was meant to represent SA's mineral world. And then she's also carrying a Maranti wood scepter with an 18 karat yellow gold plated protea 
crown encrusted with Savosky crystals. Okay, it looks like the budgets went up that year. I wonder what happened. I wonder what changed. Okay, 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 okay. There's like a little bit more money to spend. Uh, but also, I think that was a good year financially. I think all of that um FIFA 2010 <laughs> bribery money was rolling in or whatever the hell. And uh, actually, I love this look, actually. I'm going to be honest. I really, really like this look. Even though, honestly, like first glance, this is giving me very Greek goddess. Um, very much like Nike carrying the torch, something Aphrodite might wear. So I like it's not it doesn't feel like super super like South African African to me. But again, what does that even mean? But like overall, it's just really beautiful. And I promise it's not even just because I'm like biased about against how much like I love this woman. But like I think this is so nice. I like how small the headpiece is. I like how glittery it is like i'm a magpie i love a sparkly thing i obviously i wish the tool matched her skin tone it is very very stark um and it also does kind of remove from the effect of like the floating swarovskis and then this little gold drapes piece and i'm imagining like the silver part kind of has to represent like platinum do we mind silver in south africa i know we, we're big on gold and platinum right and all oh, oh, diamonds as well we do diamonds yeah <laughs> so i'm imagining those are represented there but i think it's really beautiful i don't even mind like the one leg piece i wish her shoes you know what it was 2012 let me leave her shoes alone. It was that that was all that was available in shops. But yeah, I think it was really beautiful. I wonder if this is like organza. It's got such a beautiful like iridescentness to like the gold fabric, and it really flows and drapes. I love it. And I can only imagine that must have had really amazing movement on stage, which I think is also another factor to consider. Like this needs to like be dynamic, and it has to have motion because it's on TV and it's on a stage. The scepter is like ah whatever. I feel like they could have done a lot more with it. Like it looks like there's just some like like reed wrapped around the base of that it's not really big i think is i feel like scepters are supposed to be like lit and this doesn't represent something that's on fire in any way to me so eh. but yeah i still really like it i like her hair and makeup i like the drop earrings yeah i like really like him i don't know if it's s tier hey it does need a few tweaks but it's also like actually no, i'm gonna give it s tier I like it a lot. Like, I, I really, really like it a lot. <laughs> okay, now we get to 2013, and our queen that year was Marilyn Ramos. Ramos? Ramos? Um, I don't have any information on who designed her garment. Oh, oh God, I just looked at it. Um, Yeah, babe. Ah, I don't even want to say anything, yeah. But I'm going to be fair. Let me, like, let me just judge it on its construction merits. I'm not going to say anything else about the other stuff going on. Um, this leotard is okay. Little waist belt. Yeah, alrighty, we threw that on there. The shoes are horrendous. Oh my goodness. The the ankle um beads, the ankle aprons. I mean like yeah, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> God, it is not looking good for my girls right now. There's a lot of D tier here. Cool. Let's move swiftly to 2014. And her dress was designed by Greg Margellis or Margellis from the Cape Town College of Fashion Design. Again, don't really have any information on what it was supposed to be representing or whatever the fuck. Um, oh my God. Okay. 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 This is so crazy to me. I've never seen people really make me not like zebra print before. Like it's my, it's my favorite neutral. But wow. And also more than anything, I think this is like, besides the fact that I think like this design is like tacky and again, not in a fun way, it's not flattering for her body. Like I think this um, flag, this, what is that, beaded or sequined? It's probably sequined. This flag waist belt thing needs to have ended like have a higher waistline or more of a cinching effect at the waist. So that means I think either like a fuller skirt, so there'd be more of a proportional difference um and then yeah no this like this waistline is just at a really awkward place i think it just doesn't really work i think either the the bust line should have been a bit lower or this whole thing should have been shorter or then even waist division or a bigger skirt it actually just does not look it doesn't look up vibe like at all oh no and she's so beautiful what a crime i like her hair and her makeup actually very pretty very very pretty um Wow, wow! I feel like I just witnessed a murder. How could you do that to just a beautiful girl? Let's get to 2015 and our queen that we yeah was Refilwe Mtimunye. 
don't have any information on who designed it and what it was supposed to symbolize or represents. Uh, but I did find this really funny quote about like her, her pageant journey. Um, and I think it's from her mom or aunt that she used to press bean bags into her armpits to master the posture of the catwalk. And I just, I don't understand. Hold on, let me see. What the, how would that work? Let's, let's just quickly get this out. Okay, I don't have bean bags, but I've got these two Hello Kitty things. <laughs> Honestly, this is doing this to my posture. So, okay, let me see. Maybe if I move them back. Ah, but now they're going to fall. Oh, maybe that's also the one. They want to, like, fall out. But maybe that's, like, what makes it, like. Oh. That's, that's not too bad. Okay. Let me see. Does that work for walking? What? Like, try seeing me walk from here. No, this feels stupid. <laughs> this feels really ridiculous. Oh wait, let me put my babies back. Oh, oh, hello. Um, I kind of like this. I'm not mad at this, hey. You wanna? Yeah, I actually don't even think this shield is kind of corny, though. It looks like is this made out of paper? Is this made out of paper? Are you serious? Okay, I'm. And don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure, like historically, traditionally, these were made out of these are made out of animal hide, and I don't know the methods that go into making them. But like, what a missed opportunity to go enlist some like local craftsmen and like really highlight, you know, a, a, a beautiful skill, local talent that we have here. Like, this is paper because that feels it looks way too thin to be any kind of leather. Um, maybe it's just like a really thin fabric. Again, I don't like that. I just get some cow hide, you know? It's like. But anyway, fine, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, this shade of gold is really nice against her skin. Like, it's really nice against her skin. I don't mind the shoes too much. You know, I don't usually like just like a cape thing. I feel like I like a full skirt, but I like how it, I like it. It's pretty. Um, this color, uh, yeah, I'm not so crazy about, but very pretty. And I think that if I had to see this from far away, I'd be like, hey, wow, she must be going somewhere. So I'm gonna bring that in. Uh, bring back the bikinis. Yeah, I'm gonna put that in. Bring back the bikinis. Like, uh, okay, I like that. It didn't make me as mad as the last one. So, 2016, and we've got Ntando Kunene. And all I was able to find out was that this was celebrating her Swaziland or Eswatini roots. So I think this was still Swaziland in 2016. Yes, her Swati roots. Let's say that. This headpiece is very skinny, and not skinny in a good way. Skinny is in. Did you run out of budget, babe? Come on now, get out a little bit more. Um, I'm just saying. Also, why do I, I only have one image of this? So we're not really getting like the full effects. I don't really know what this looks like from the front. Um, these, oh, this is okay. This is some sort of yarn tassel. I really hope these are made out of real wool and not like acrylic yarn, just because South Africa is like one of the biggest producers of mohair and I think merino wool in the world. So I think that's a great opportunity to highlight one of our chief exports. Um, but if they, if, they, if they couldn't finish the feathers, who knows? Oh, no. I, I just got this crown a little closer. And it is not well made. Um, you can see the ends of the like the feathers like peeking out of the bottom then. It's just, okay. Very hot glue. No like no thought to like finishing that off. Um, and it's not really sitting on her head. And if they wanted that more floating effect, I feel like they should have filled in that gap there. Um, not fantastic. The spear is whatever. Oh, my God. The spear is so short. <laughs> is that like a... Like more of a like a, a a specific symbolic thing like our like Swati spears shorter. I feel like I always imagine spears to be long, but is that maybe like an actual thing that they're short? I don't know. I don't wanna let me not speak about weaponry. That is like the area I know the least about. I like the idea of this little beaded skirt here, but again, like you know, follow through, make it big. Like don't be scared. It would have been really magnificent. Imagine seeing this as like a huge ball gown, like. See too much of those looks, so I can't really judge it fully. But I'm gonna put it in. Cut the cameras. Yeah, I'm putting cut the cameras. I don't think it's. I don't even. I don't think it's B level tier worthy because it seems like there's a lot of things still missing. Uh, but it's not too terrible. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. So here's an exciting one. We're gonna go to 2017, and that Miss South Africa was also that year's Miss Universe, which is Demi Lee now Peters. So many hyphens in the name. 
and her outfit was inspired by South Africa's national flower, the Protea flower, and it was designed by Lloyd Candlin of the costume department. And this is what she had to say at the time about her outfit. So African women are strong and courageous, but also soft and beautiful and feminine, just like our national flower. Oh, that is so sweet. Uh, uh, but don't ever fucking call me soft and beautiful again. Um, you know, you think because it was pink, I'd be a really big fan. <laughs> um, and you know what? You're right. Actually, I do kind of like it quite a bit. Um, or I have mixed feelings about it. I think these boots are such an interesting choice because I think they are wrong, but it's also like kind of interesting at the same time. Like it's a it's a daring choice. I like that. It's like it's not a boring choice. It's not a thing I probably would have thought to go with, but I do think it adds something to the outfit. Like there's a level of in, of visual interest. It's striking and it contrasts pretty well with this more like delicate overall look with like the organza or tool um and the the fabric flowers and these like wing okay these wings yo these wings are so silly <laughs> just one because i feel like if she puts her arms down like you lose the effect of it and i think it's kind of crazy that like she's wearing a costume that like demands that she's like she stand like this all day like that can't be comfortable is it not enough that beauty queens are like covering their teeth in vaseline like <laughs> And then as for this bodysuit, um, I guess, yeah, cool, courageous to go with a bodysuit instead of a gown. And it does, okay, it looks like there's a lot of beading that went into this, which I really appreciate. And it's really pretty, yeah, it's actually really pretty. It looks quite well made. It looks like it fits her pretty well, which, you know, well done. Um, but damn, do I feel like this looks like a protea flower? Do I feel, do I think of protea flowers when I see this? No. Not really. But it's cute though. And there's some interesting... Wait, what are her socks? What are her socks? What is going on there? Okay, that's... That's that's a... That's another surprise. That was interesting. But I'm going to put Miss Demi in... I'm going to put her in Alright Alright, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, now we're getting to 2018, and that year's queen was Tamarind Green. Her outfit was also designed by the costume department, um, which features Lloyd Canlan and also Malika or Malika Haji. And this was inspired by the blue crane, and it features over 1,000 ostrich feathers, which... Okay, nice. There was some budget spent. I think that's really cute. Uh, Tamarind... <laughs> This costume is so what I would imagine someone would design for Swan Lake. Like, this is so Swan Lake coded in a way. And yeah, actually, I like this. Uh, I think this is adorable. I like how short the skirt is and then she kind of looks like a ballerina. Like the feathers coming around. Like this little headpiece is really bird-like. Oh, uh, nah. I don't have too many comments. And as everything looks really well put together. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Like, she's cute. She's adorable. I'm putting that in surprising. That actually, like, this made me smile. <laughs> yeah, no, like, she's so cute. Like, look at this close up. Oh, oh. Now, nah, this is. Yo, they really, they really, um, they really beat her face. Yeah, like that. Like, this mug. Solid. Cute, 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 cute. Yeah. Oh my god, I just, okay, so sorry. I just noticed that also this is, this blue fabric also has like a feather print on it. And I think that's a really cute attention to detail. I like that. And I like how they've cut it on at the shoulders in a way that like um, the feathers come out there. Like sort of like how you would feel like when you, like like a wing like on you, that you see on a bird. Um, and I think that's way more interesting than just putting wings on someone anyway. Oh, and then there's like feathers at the cuffs. Oh, wow. Little hook and eye closure. Cute, 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 cute. Oh, okay, no, they did really nicely on this. I like it. I'm not too sh Oh, okay. I guess there's the the, the orange beading at the at the nose because that's what birds have. Yeah, I really hate birds, but like, it looks cute. That's really cute. Yeah, it's 2019, and it's Miss Zozi, who was also Miss Universe that year, and her outfit was also designed by Lloyd Candlin and the costume department, and it is meant to represent. It's called, oh, it was called The Wave of Love, and it features the South African flag and incorporates love letters from South African men to South African women. So Zozi's, like, platform is very big on gender-based violence, and I know she's also, like, a he for she ambassador. And, okay, I have, mm, I have thoughts about he for she, but basically, like, very much into, like, getting men to step up and be feminist and show they're here to respect and represent and 
protect women etc cool so i think all the love letters um it's very hard to tell but i think they're in like the blue all these like knotted parts on the skirt and um yeah <laughs> this is how you can tell these this, the section really doesn't go towards points because like how could she win in that um and oh my god the shoes Wow, okay. Alrighty, uh, like a peep toe, babe. A peep toe. And then also, I don't know what it is about the fact that this leotard is white that makes it look really cheap, but it just does. Like, it just does. This feels, uh, it's just, yeah, it's really, it feels really amateur hour. And you can also see there's like some hanging threads that went, oh, are these on purpose? Oh, these aren't hanging threads. These are like, are these like Swarovskis. Okay, uh, I don't know. It doesn't add to the effect. It looks terrible. Um, I think this like knotting or these like bowed techniques is is really beautiful on a craftsmanship level. But again, I don't know if this was employed the best way. Once again, like you just these colors don't look nice together. Like I just I just don't know how many ways I can say that. Like it does not work. No one can make it look good. Bad. Like look at how beautiful Zosie is. Like and it, she 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 looks terrible. She also got dressed in the dark, which is probably true, considering, you know, load shedding or whatever. Um, and then also this hanging gem feels very out of place. This crown, maybe it's just for the photograph, but it is off kilter. And also, ah, it's whatever. And I think also considering when you have someone with, like, short hair, I think is a really great opportunity to play with a headpiece and, like, go really crazy with it. Um, but obviously they couldn't because they've got this gigantic, stupid-ass wave coming around, yeah. And yeah, I'm so sorry to do this to Zozi, but like, <laughs> this is going into do I do I need to say more category? Like, then we're gonna move into 2020, and we have Natasha Yobert. So her dress features drawings made by children from Deep Sloot and Randberg, featuring stories of their time in lockdown. By the way, this video was 2020, and this was designed by Chet Johan Gutzia. And then so they took all of these kids' drawings, and then they digitized them, and then printed them onto the fabric. I think this outfit is actually pretty cool. Um, I think it's a very sweet message to incorporate into the garment. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's very interesting to think about like lockdown art. And I, I like that actually they found a very subtle way to sort of incorporate those African flag colors. Again, I still don't really like them, but I think making sure that there was a very minimal amount of them, using them sort of as a contrast feature and then keeping a lot of white really works in this garment's favor. I think the earrings are so cute. I wish we did something a little bit more with the hair. I think an updo is a good idea, but maybe like, I don't know, maybe include some texture in that bun or I don't know. I don't know. You tell me what you think. I don't know. Something more with the hair would have been interesting. Maybe a little more with the makeup, but also it's a pageant. So what are you going to do? But okay. In terms of construction though, like this looks really well made. Like, oh, and the beading is fantastic. And I like that. I like, I like the length of it. It's gorgeous. And the, the structure in this little corseted middle here looks lovely. And then the ruching in between beautiful detail there really adds to it i love the beading at the top yeah does it go all the way through oh, that's gorgeous okay now she she gets a she gets a surprising for me yeah 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 you know what's interesting Khojo and Kutia designs a lot of the like final or the evening gowns for the queens but i've never seen him do a lot of the um national costumes i'm not sure why but i actually wish he did since he's done so well um I guess what looks like the only one he's ever done and that's really pretty and also I actually do really like him as a design I, I think he's got a very good eye for like craftsmanship he always incorporates a lot of beading there's a lot of corsetry and like internal structure and shaping in his garments um and a lot of embellishment and trim and he always does it in a really nice impactful way and even though I'm someone who thinks more is more he's always really good at striking that balance of having just enough embellishment but like not too much so stuff always feels really expensive and high quality and like real effort and thought went into it and every decision of the garment feels really carefully curated and planned and it's always very cohesive so yeah even though I do think he does get quite repetitive, I still feel like it's better to constantly repeat quality work than come up with fresh ideas that aren't well thought out or not well done, you know? Anyway, cool. Now we're jumping to 2021, and that's the year we have Israel Dahl, um, Miss Lalele Mswane. Um, she was actually second runner-up that year, and that was the year Miss Universe was held in Israel, which, you know, um, this is a free Palestine house, okay? Shout out. Um, anyway, so her, and it's also very funny that her um, 
garment was meant to represent the dove of peace and be a message of hope um and also by the way my i didn't actually really hold any anger towards like la 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 for going to um israel because i feel like this was probably the organization itself um sort of making her go there i'm sure she was contractually obligated i don't i don't know if she actually ever had like a specific stance on the thing she just went um but i definitely think south africa as an organization itself should have done more i think as a country like i'm pretty sure and you guys can correct me on this because it, it's been a while since i read the news because i'm just a girl but like we're very much pro palestine in this country and i think it's so wild for a country to have that has actually had apartheid for you to go send someone to an apartheid site and like go enter a pageant and agree with that especially considering the history of Miss South Africa which by the way I have an entire video about where we weren't even allowed at Miss Universe for like 15 years or something like that or like well over a decade because of our apartheid laws and then you would go and I mean also it's wild of them to host something in Israel and do that but either way like where is the sense of solidarity? Where is the sense of like our country's values and histories? Where is the sense of you as an organization that used to be whites only making at least, if not reparations, like acting better, correcting your future and present behavior? Like that honestly is something I just I've always find found really like upsetting about the Miss Universe. Not Miss Universe, Miss South Africa organization in Nepal. Like that was so ridiculous. Especially because I think that Lele received most of the flack when everyone was really outra righteously outraged about that. And I don't know how much control she might have had over that decision. But anyways, let's look at this double piece. Oh, see, by the way, Lalele is a ballerina, which, you know, something is always something that endears me to people because I love ballerinas. I really wish I was one. Um... So I love that she's on point for this, but damn, <laughs> this, this outfit sucks. It feels like a really, it feels like a poor man's version of, was it Tamron Green's one? Like, no. And again, something about white leotards just feel really cheap to me. Like, I don't know what it is that I don't like about them, but I just don't like it. Like, eh, this is gross. Um, also, I don't think there was enough beading um, or Swarovski crystal thing done here. It feels like, again running out of funds um these feathers are put over quite haphazardly i'm sure it must have been a beautiful effect when she was doing like porrits and stuff like that and like raising her arms like that must have been really quite nice to see them move uh but again i think why not give her a tutu she's a ballerina like what's wrong with that i think that would have been really beautiful you know what i think would have been a really great idea um even though i know she's not Zonga, um because i think that's actually Navi, but if they like had meshed together a tutu and a shibalani like that would have been because i think that would have been really beautiful and dynamic and Hmm, I think that might be an idea for my next project. So I'm putting this into... I'm not going to say cut the cameras because I still think it's a lot better than some of the other stuff. But like... Eh. Okay, and then we're at the final uh, part of this video. I feel like I've been talking for so long. And that was our 2022 Miss South Africa and Davi Nogeri and then Yashi Zakchi and her And her outfit was meant to represent not only um, Shangani colors, but also the diversity of South Africa and Africa as a whole. Her outfit was designed by Selo Mudupe, who's the designer behind Scalo. And then the wings were made by Hank Henderson of Henderson Works. And this is actually <laughs> the outfit that um, initiated again this whole video. So let's actually get into it. Um, Full circle moment, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. This feels very um hotep core. Um, these wings, like, you know what? I I do appreciate the ability to look at the shape of the African continent and say that like, oh, that could work well as a wing shape thing, right? Fucking genius. That's a. That's a. But once again, you know I don't like that flag. You know, just know. You know uh You know when it comes to that flag, I'm a hater. I'm an absolute hater. Like, if I was pretty, if I wasn't unsure about whether a daughter was illegal to burn it, I would burn it. And then the other side of the wing has all of the um, different African nations, or at least I think these are the ones that are recognized by the UN. Um, which again, like, is that? I mean, I think there are different ways to represent Africa. Like, do you know what? Something that's like really commonly found on the continent, things like cowrie shells or like animal hides. I don't know, or something else. But um yeah again these wings are silly i'm not sure about these the shoe choice honestly i think this was also kind of like pinup inspired so this headpiece is really interesting i don't know if scandal also made this um as well but um i think in terms of like just on a construction level it's really beautiful and it looks quite well crafted and i know that it takes quite a bit of engineering to get everything to like hang like that and i'm not sure what flower this is, is it like a someone tell me what flower this is but it's really beautiful 
I don't know if I like it for the look or I feel like it's also competing with the wings and stuff. I think I would have loved to see this paired with something else. I think it's really beautiful. I even like the like the beaded bang. The beaded bang. Like that's cute. Like let me let me move that aside. That's beautiful. And then the dress, okay. The dress is it fits her really nicely. It's really well made. I like how they incorporated the print. And then it sort of feels like it's kind of picked up with like the hanging beading, the tassels there. I like this belt. I like that it's a nice strong color. Beautiful. Um, and then I think the skirt looks like, okay, this is a different print, but I like that it matches the colors of the, the, the bodice. Gorgeous. And I like how they've also incorporated these colors into sort of these hanging tassels here. Really lovely. I do take issue with the hemline and the length of it. I don't know. I think okay maybe i'm maybe this is just the prudent me but like yeah i want it to be longer <laughs> but still really beautiful uh do you know what i think everyone was really mad at this look and i don't know if that's super fair i think without the wings it's still a pretty decent look though i don't know if it would be like a eye capturing like show-stopping moment i think it would just be a really pretty dress um so i'm gonna put that in bring back the, bring back the bikinis yeah okay cool um and then now yeah, that's our that's our that's our list uh, so far hmm i'm also just kind of noticing that everyone i've got in st is pretty much in some sort of like white and silver color palette which feels like my inherent bias is coming through like if if your shit doesn't bang your shit just doesn't bang that's what it is and I, there's nothing i can do about that anyway thank you so much for watching i would love to hear what any of your favorite um national costumes from miss universe were i did consider including some of the miss world ones but it looks like miss world stopped doing the national costume section a couple years ago or if not that i'm not really good at researching um but it felt like a lot of looks to get through just with miss universe alone so if anyone does want to see in this world section we can go through that and yeah again let me know which ones you liked if you agreed with me i would love for you to argue with me in the comments because that does drive up engagement and i am a little bit of a slut for attention and i have an addiction to seeing um notifications so and anyways otherwise you can catch up with me on other social media platforms instagram twitter or x tiktok i also have a newsletter that i publish almost weekly called hangar management and there i talk about sustainability and personal style and other clothes stuff uh everything's linked down below and yeah i guess hopefully i'll catch you very soon don't you wish you were half fish like brazil